Hello, my friends. It's Ranger Russ from the Megs Point Nature Center. Uh, coming to you a little early today because I wanted to try and get these gulls landing. We have lots of different kinds of gulls, so I'm just going to say gulls as a group. Uh, now, if you noticed, they all landed and they are all facing the same direction. And that's really important. The wind is really strong today. It's blowing out of the west, southwest, which is the same direction that each of these gulls is facing as they land. It's really important for them to do that because if they're facing another direction, that wind is going to blow their feathers, going to ruffle them all up. It's going to be really uncomfortable for them. So they're smart enough to know that when it's time to land, they face into the wind. Okay, pretty cool that they do that. Now we've got some greater blackbacks out there. That's one carrying a little piece of something. It looks like a feather. It's picked up a feather from another bird, another gull. There's some uh, herring gulls out here as well. The brown ones are gonna be the juveniles, the uh, white and gray or white and black in the case of the greater blackback. Uh, those are the adults and it takes them uh, three to four years to get that adult color. All right, now today, I went, came, it started a little early. Um, let's, let's do the intro now. So first of all, I want to encourage everyone, it is, like I said, it's very windy today. Encourage everyone to uh, sign up for our YouTube channel or subscribe to our YouTube channel. We need a thousand subscribers and then I can start doing these programs live on YouTube as well as on Facebook. Now yesterday I had the opportunity, uh, we did a salt marsh program and then I was able to do a program for a school group and they absolutely loved doing the program through Zoom. So if you're interested in getting a, a Zoom program for your school, you can call us at the Nature Center, 203-245-8743, or you can uh, contact us through our website, megspointnaturecenter.org. There's a contact us uh, section there. And if you wanna see all the past videos, uh, they're on YouTube and they are archived in the Virtual Learning Center on the website, along with other educational materials. So with each video, there are some downloadable things. All right. Today I was going to do beach combing. Now we've done beach combing in the past, but as the seasons change, different things are washing up on the beach. Uh, however, this very windy front came through yesterday and has changed the plan a little bit. So let me turn the camera around so you can see what I'm talking about. Hopefully you can hear me okay. It is really windy and very wavy. Looks like the tide is up right now. With this storm surge and the, the tide being up, it is quite impressive. Now again, the wind is out of the the west, maybe southwest a little bit. Um, you can see, yeah, this looks like high tide. The waves are bringing up foam. Now, just because that foam is being brought up, that does not mean this, there's pollution in the water. Okay, you can see the foam. That is just the agitation of the water. Oh, I can feel the salt spray on my face. It may show up on the camera a little bit. Um, but again, that foam is uh, proteins in the water that are agitated, just like when you make a milkshake, it foams up. So that doesn't mean that our water is polluted. Now you can see we've got quite a few uh, slipper snails. I will, I will talk about those. 
take a look back at the waves. These are not the largest waves we've had at Hammond Asset. I don't even know if they're the largest ones I've filmed on, uh, on these programs. Again, if you want to see, I did film during uh, Tropical Storm Isaias. Um, so, if you want to see that, go to the uh, YouTube channel or uh, the virtual uh, learning page, virtual learning center on our uh, website. Now I do see there's a little trash that's washed up here. I don't know if that's washed up. Actually, it looks light enough to be. Yeah, probably floating. That little car washed up on our beach. Take a look. We've got some oyster now mixed in with the slipper snails. Oyster shells and slipper snails are primarily what we're going to find. Now, uh, normally we would be doing beach combing and we would probably be doing it over there. Uh, but with this uh, storm surge, this wind is just pushing the water up higher onto our beach than it normally would. I'm going to go to the jetty today. Uh, yesterday there was a lot of seaweed washed up on the beach and I was really hoping to spend uh, time showing you more of the different types of seaweed and today I'm not seeing any seaweed it probably got pulled out uh, with the low tide but yes this is a quite quite impressive amount of wind we've got going today piece of firewood there because of the direction of the wind I don't think that the jetty is going to be blocking waves like it normally does oh what's going on in front of us there there's a gull picking through a couple of them that looks like a ringbill gull is the closer one to us and then farther away Looks like that could be a bigger, so that looks like a herring gull. Juvenile though, with the brown coloring. Um, but the gulls are opportuni opportunistic, and they're omnivores, so they're gonna be picking through to see if there's any slipper snails left in their shells. We've talked about slipper snails a little bit, but I'll, I'll go over them again. Uh, the slipper snails are colonial snails that attach themselves to uh, a substrate. They want to be attached to something that's not going to move a whole lot. So typically it's a rock, but sometimes they do attach themselves to the wrong thing and they end up getting washed around. But when the first slipper snail attaches itself, its sex is indeterminate. As other snails attach themselves, the first one there will become a female, and the new ones that are on top will become males. As more slipper snails attach to the back of the one on top, the new ones arriving will become female uh, males, and the ones that were males, that are the stack begins to stack on top of them, will turn into females. So on the top of your stack of uh, slipper snails all right I'm not sure if it's raining right now or if we've got uh, wind the water hitting me from the waves but on the top of a, a stack of slipper snails you will have males in the middle they will be transitioning from males to females and on the bottom they are females look at how that gull has to walk because of the wind did you see that he walks sideways for a little bit he really wants to stay, or it wants to stay facing the wind. Just like the other gulls, the wind is really picked up here, I've noticed. 
Um, actually leaning into the wind quite a bit right now. And that gull looks like it's uh, having a similar issue that I am. And again, it's looking for those snails. Occasionally, if the bottom snail dies, the entire colony will wash up on the beach and that provides food uh, for crabs and gulls and any other scavengers that will come along the beach. There goes another gull. Um, raccoons will come out here in the evenings and uh, look for snails as well. There's another ringbill up there. So these are the gulls that haven't gotten enough food yet today. There's another little shovel. Kids' toys wash up on the beach, or they're left on the beach, I should say, more often than washing up on the beach. Okay. Do we have any questions? I'm going to take a pause here and scroll back, see if I missed any. Ah, Ernie's watching. Hello, Ernie. Ernie probably has some uh, stories about the wind here at Hammonasset. Favorite kind of day. Looks like Susan says uh, likes the surf and the wind. All right. Now, the variety is really not what I expected today. I thought that we would have a lot more uh, material washed up on the beach, or a lot more different types of things washed up on the beach. And again, slipper snails, they don't move. Once they're attached, that's it. Just like an oyster, the oysters cement themselves and are permanently attached the slipper snails use a suction cup. They are snails, so they suction themselves on. Let's look at this. There's some dark water, some really big waves there. Look at those dark clouds. So that's probably a rain cloud there. Over here, if you look at the clouds, there's an opening in the clouds over there. It looks like over Long Island, they might be getting some, some of this is breaking up. This is supposed to be broken up by, uh, by noon. These clouds are supposed to break up a little bit, no more rain. And then over here we can see a patch of sun hitting the water. Look how beautiful that is. You can see the reflection of the sun hitting the water. And notice my gimbal is slightly off. I wonder if it's tipping because of the wind. It's trying to compensate itself because the wind keeps tipping it. Look at that beautiful sun shining through there. Look at that. There's a hole in the cloud. All right, let's uh, step up on the jetty here. So this jetty was put in in the 50s. I don't remember the exact year. It has shifted quite a bit. Initially, the jetty would have looked like this. The entire jetty, you'd be able to walk on it just like this all the way out. But over the years, the waves and winds have shifted the rocks. And it's not a smooth, nice walk like this, this part here. Uh, years ago, we did talk about, I hope you guys can still hear me. We did talk about uh, covering this with some sort of deck or making a pier um, so that you could walk out, have a safer place to fish, and it would be more of a destination for people uh, to go out onto. And I still think that would be really cool if we had a pier out here. Now, I do notice the waves on this side of the jetty on the east side of the jetty are a little smaller than the waves on the west side of the jetty. And again, the wind's coming out of the southwest. Which is driving these waves larger and larger, it seems like. 
Uh, let's see, do any animals eat the shells themselves? The empty ones. Great question. We do actually get a worm. I don't know that they eat the slipper snails, but they do eat other shells, They w especially uh, the transverse arc shells. And the worm eats the calcium out of them so that they can build their own uh, sheath. They build a calcium sheath or shell out of the calcium they get from the shells. That wind just pushed me right off of the jetty. That is quite impressive. All right. Oh, there's a, notice our garbage can over there, our dumpster. The wind is blowing that lid, holding it open over there. That is pretty cool. There's one of that log washed up here years ago. It was actually a bit longer. We had to cut it shorter uh, in order to move it off of the main part of the beach. All right, let's take a look at some of the plants here. We didn't find, oh, there is a little seaweed over there. We'll go look at the seaweed. We've got some goldenrod, the seaside goldenrod. We've got some beach pea. Yeah, I never catch the peas when they're uh, ripe. I find the flowers, but I haven't gotten to ever try and eat one of the peas. I think the animals eat them before I get to them. Got a little dune grass there as well. Now, when I started here 20 years ago, there wasn't any of this here. There were no plants uh, here on the jetty. This has built up over, over the years of me working here. We did used to have, you can see there's some goldenrod popping out of the jetty. Where there was some of that and little tufts of goldenrod along the edge here. But, oh, now the sun, look at that sun is out now. But that is really new. Uh, all the sand, I guess, is built up and giving it a good place to grow. All right, let's see if we got some seaweed over here to talk about. Oh, some more trash. Unfortunately, some sort of sandwich packaging, plastic. Uh, got some styrofoam, looks like an old fishing bobber. Not the things I hope to find doing beachcombing, but they're always here. All right, let's take a look. Uh, we've got some blue mussel shells. The blue mussels live on the rocks here. They are on the jetty. Again, not as many of them as we used to have on the jetty. There are lots of animals that are harder to find in Long Island Sound now, like the lobster. The blue mussels got, have that beautiful color in there. And all along the shoreline here, you can find these in our local restaurants. People love them. Uh, question, any rose hips? Look at that. That happened fast. Any rose hips, they should be good about now. Actually, I am still seeing roses, at least on this uh, little patch of um, beach rose that we were just looking at. There are still roses there. I'm not seeing any rose hips on that one, um, but we will go and check uh, the other ones here. There's another batch of roses up ahead. So let's go and see if we can find some rose hips. Since our beachcombing adventure is not finding a whole lot of stuff right now, we're going to turn it into other things. Bladder rack, yes. Uh, bladder rack, or there's other names for it, and now I'm not thinking of them. Look at all that trash. We're going to have to come back here with a garbage can and some gloves and pick this stuff up. It's a, like the second or third lighter I've seen. Now look at all of our friendly gulls. This is a good time to talk about gulls too. Everybody calls them seagulls. Um, technically there is no bird called a seagull. I would say that the group of birds are called seagulls, uh, but they each have their individual names. 
We've got the small ones over there are ring-billed gulls. We've got herring gulls. These waves are coming right up on me now. It's pretty spectacular. Let's get you back so you can see the waves. Are there still rats living in and around the rocks on the jetty? Absolutely. Obviously right now, if we look back at the jetty, they are not gonna be out on that part of the jetty. They could be hiding up in here, but chances are they've been driven over into, the, into this back dune here over by Meg's bathhouse. Um, but yes, we still get rats and the mink still come around too. The mink are actually like to eat the rats. That's good. Look at that juvenile herring gull has a uh, spider crab or at least the remains of a spider crab that it's eating. It's getting, the, it doesn't like the waves pushing it either. It just moved back like I do when the waves come in. Look at how the wind holds the water up here. You can see it, the water wants to go back out and the wind is just blowing it and holding it up. It's actually flowing around here too. The bulk of it. Oh, we got a little fight going on over this uh, over this crab carcass. Lots of the little ring bill gulls. There are other gulls hovering over us. There we go. That one landed. This is a beautiful day though. It's not too cold. Let's go take a look and see if we can find some rose hips. So here we have some of our beach rows. There's some dune grass here as well. Look at how that dune grass is all just being laid right over by the wind. That's the great thing about dune plants is they can survive uh, what they're being put through today. So there's a rose hip. This one is pretty well past though. And I'm looking and it looks like most of them here are past. So those roses that were over on the jetty are still blooming. Uh, there's one pink one up there. You guys see that pink one? Uh, they're still blooming. These have all gone by. If we go further in, we may find uh, some in the shelter, sheltered from the wind that maybe haven't gone by. There's another one in bloom. Now these are beautiful roses but these are not native uh, species. They are an invasive. Yeah, there's more, uh, oh, there's some bittersweet. You can see the bittersweets getting the fall colors there, that, or, that yellow uh, husk, which will break open and expose a orange berry inside. So now we're up uh, farther away from the wind. Still have some uh, roses in bloom, but I'm not seeing any uh, ripe rose hips. How do they determine the height of the waves or do they just eyeball it? Here at the park, we just eyeball it, but they do have, uh, out in Long Island Sound, there's a buoy. Uh, I'm not going to remember the name of it. It has a, I mean the number. And you can, uh, it's a Coast Guard or maybe it's NOAA, runs it and, and it determines by its movement uh, and uh, telemetry devices that are on that uh, channel buoy what the wave height is out in Long Island Sound. On the shore typically you're just going to have um, a yardstick or a footstick uh, in the stuck in the sand, and that can tell you what the wave height is as well. It's like lots of people coming out to uh, enjoy 
this wind today. American or Oriental bittersweet, that's the Oriental bittersweet. I don't know if we have any native bittersweet at Hammonasset. I have never found any here at Hammonasset. Uh, actually, I've never found any along the shore. I worked at Rocky Neck for many years and we didn't have any there either. Um, so I'm thinking that the uh, American bittersweet, the native bittersweet, likes to grow more inland uh, than the Oriental bittersweet. All right, got a little bit of uh, sand hitting me. Mostly water though. Let's move over here and see if there's something else we can find. To... That's our beach combing. Not seeing a lot of that. Now there's some waves crashing on some rocks right here. Uh, there's a little sea lettuce. Yesterday, whoa, those gulls, they just had to come in for a super fast landing. I think the wind was pushing them down a bit. And they grabbed what I was going to show you. That one flew away with my red beard sponge. Is that red beard sponge? I think that's red beard sponge. I'm not going to chase after him after that gull. It's working hard for its uh, its meal. There's a little bit of, of uh, sea lettuce here. Whoa, the wind just blew it right out of my hand. There we go. There's some sea lettuce. Looks like some uh, seed pods are sort of like caught in there. That's some sort of plant, I'm hoping not pollution. And here's, there's a little piece of red beard sponge, which is what those gulls were after, which I was going to show you. So a uh, red beard sponge, um, we never called things, in science, they didn't call things orange. So you're not going to see, it should be orange beard sponge. And I believe that had something to do with uh, when orange was actually recognized as a color. Um, I don't know that they really, when that happened. But red beard sponge, the red phase of a green crab, it's actually orange. Somebody wants me to eat this uh, sea lettuce. I really uh, am not a fan of seaweed. It's too salty for me. Um, I like it in sushi and other things, but eating it plain, it's just, I'm not a, a big salt fan. So that's, we also get red finger sponges, which are thicker, as thick as your finger. There's a strange color for a slipper snail. Usually I don't see them this color. Now, something just happened behind me here. So this stick just dropped out of the sky. There were two uh, gulls flying over and I think they were fighting over this stick for some reason. Unless there's a person around here that chucked it at me. Purple sand at this end of the beach. Only the other end, yes, but unfortunately, since they did the beach restoration program, uh, they brought in sand and covered up the purple sand, and it really hasn't gotten the big uh, patches of purple sand that we used to have. All right. 
Any other questions we have? All right, we're gonna head back and I'm gonna do the wrap up as we, as we walk. So if hopefully everyone is still enjoying these programs, I will continue to do them Tuesdays through Fridays at 11 o'clock live on Facebook. You can watch them on YouTube if you don't catch them live. If you have questions or comments, you can send them through our website, megspointnaturecenter.org. You can also see the videos and additional educational materials in our virtual learning center on our website. And this, I think the wind just picked up again. All right. So this is Ranger Russ coming to you from the Meg's Beach here at Hammonasset Beach State Park. I will see you all tomorrow at 11 o'clock on Facebook Live for another live presentation. Thank you for watching.